Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I want to talk about a subject that comes up often in American politics, and that's the blaming of the video game industry for violent acts and mass shootings. If you've been following the news this week, then you might know there's two more mass shootings in the United States, 20 dead in El Paso, Texas, and nine dead in Dayton, Ohio. And if you go back a few more days to July 28th, three more people were killed in California. And of course, this is only counting deaths and not the massive amounts of life-changing injuries and trauma for those that survive. The United States has a mass shootings problem that's only escalated to an insane level over the past 20 years. There's no denying that, no matter what your political allegiances are. And as a country, we've been pretty stagnant about it when it comes to finding a solution. Gun ownership, the right to bear arms, is something that's deeply ingrained in American culture. So much so that even suggesting a ban on firearms has become a political landmine. So instead, our politicians try to push tighter gun control or occasionally turn to blaming loosely correlated ideas like that violent video games are the reason we have mass gun violence in this country. And with the most recent wave of mass shootings, I hate even saying that phrase, it sounds so crazy that we've just gotten used to it. But with the recent one, our House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy spoke about how video games are dehumanizing individuals. Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick just said in response to the shootings, we've always had guns, always had evil, but I see a video game industry that teaches young people to kill. And then, just today, President Trump said, we must stop the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. It's too easy today for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence. We must stop or substantially reduce this, and it has to begin immediately. So once again, video games are center stage and they're becoming the political scapegoat for mass violence in the US. Again, they haven't really stopped since 1999 for the most part. It's easier and politically safer to blame games than guns or gun control policy, even when there's overwhelming studies and evidence to show that violent video games have negligible effect on violent tendencies or actions. It's easier to see how people might draw that kind of conclusion though. We want to understand why these things happen. And you see kids playing all kinds of shooter games. Then some of them grow up and shoot a bunch of innocent people. Or maybe they don't even grow up and they still shoot a bunch of innocent people. The problem is that not only is there no statistical correlation between the violence in video games and in the increase in shootings, but many, many studies conducted on the matter concluded that it does not have an effect on our violent tendencies. The American Psychological Association's Media Psychology Division issued a public statement in 2017 discouraging politicians and journalists from connecting games and violence. Not only because their studies indicated that it was not correlated, but also because they understand the psychological effects of politicians fear-mongering with these simple tagline statements connecting the two things together. It doesn't matter what all the research in the world tells you, if a politician gets up on a soapbox and says one thing does another thing, people are going to start believing it. The people, the masses, do not like complicated answers or studies. It's so much easier to use topical logic to say because of this than that. Boiling complex psychological and societal problems down to an elementary level math equation. Violent video games plus kids equals mass shootings. A plus B equals C. We can understand that. We can also pile upon our own concerns of how addicting games can be to young kids and how influential young kids are. Nerf guns, action movies, video games, our kids are drawn to them and often parents wish that they weren't. So being able to point a finger and say that this is bad and shouldn't be available lets parents put the blame on the industry and the government. Now, personally, I believe that there's very little chance that we're actually going to ban violent video games. It's not to say it's inconceivable, but the legal precedent for doing so is very unlikely. Video games can be and almost always will be classified as a form of expression, whether it's visual art or speech, 
we enjoy having the freedom to express those things as we please. Oftentimes they will come with age restrictions as do movies or adult literature, but that's just for the purpose of retail sales. If parents wanna give their children media with age restrictions that's not appropriate for them, then for the most part, they can do so. The video game industry already has regulated age restrictions and prevents the sales of violent video games to minors. But as much as you might be able to try and control what your kids play in your house, there's a good chance that if they want to play a violent video game, they can do so at one of their friends' houses. So there's certainly a bit of an illusion to the amount of control you might have over it. Hence the popularity of federal regulations on violent content. Again, something that parents don't have to take responsibility for. Some countries, such as Germany, actually have fairly intense censorship policies in their games. Sometimes blood has been turned green, or other levels of gore have been removed before the games are legal in their market. However, because of having online game purchases, many gamers are able just to get the uncensored version that might be available in a neighboring country fairly easily. In China, they also have very strict censorship laws, although that censorship is usually based around political ideas or ideology as opposed to just violence in itself. So certain symbolism or ideas that are communicated within video games, that can cause a video game to get banned in China. So that kind of censorship is a little bit more freaky to me. That's an entirely different subject. But for example, we have a different version of Call of Duty that's specifically for the Chinese market and nobody in the Western markets plays that variant of Call of Duty. So there's already pretty massive levels of video game censorship occurring in the world. If the US employed some stricter laws on it, it would almost certainly change video game censorship for a global market or at least the entire Western market because Developers would cater their games to the US market and then everybody else would just play the games that are designed to fit within those censorship laws. So in an effect, US censorship of video games could affect the world rather than just our country. Now, if you ask me, the strongest censorship tools for video games are actually already in play in the US. Look at Fortnite. It's essentially a violent video game where players run around killing each other with shotguns, sniper rifles, assault rifles, and rocket launchers but it's portrayed in a cartoony way. So advertisers and media outlets tend to like it or think of it as safe content. It's talked about casually on daytime TV and it's the most lucrative game you can show on YouTube because ads are fully unrestricted, fully monetized. People will make more money showing Fortnite videos as opposed to other more violent video games. So instead of having to censor things with federal laws, it's essentially just gonna become less popular because of advertising trends and being able to market non-violent games so much easier. There's a reason why the gameplay for the latest Star Wars game doesn't let you dismember people with lightsabers because that would bump the game into a new classification that would make it less marketable and your videos wouldn't be as watchable on YouTube and you wouldn't be able to sell it to a younger audience. So whether or not we have federal laws governing this, essentially capitalism is directing the censorship of video games right now. So things are much more censored than they might otherwise be. Nonetheless, blaming violent video games for shootings in the real world is going to be a popular stance for politicians until, well, gun violence stops. If it stops, one has to wonder what exactly it's gonna to take to force federal action in this regard. Kids are shooting kids, people are shooting people in the masses, and the national conversation seems to be a series of deflections. Downplaying the severity of the situation by comparing gun deaths to car crash deaths or alcohol-related deaths, or just deflecting to the violent video game epidemic that is clearly influencing our youth. Video games have been the scapegoat since they've been, well, mainstream, but ever since the Columbine massacre in 1999, we've had 20 years of focused research showing no correlation and 20 years of politicians blaming video games for the cause of mass shootings. The irony of the whole situation is that politicians are claiming violent video games are desensitizing us to death. And yet by deflecting away from the real issues and creating real solutions, they're probably enabling more violent death for their own political gain which are the actions of someone I would consider to be, well, desensitized to death. Anyway, that's where we are in 2019. Since this is all started, 
Really the only major changes that have been enacted on the video game industry have been through some age restriction sales and things like that. But beyond that it feels like culture is kind of self-regulating itself. People are not wanting to advertise with violent video games as much and thus people are making less violent video games or they're getting shown off less with free marketing and advertising in the social media sphere. So in a way it seems like society might self-regulate but society is also based on perception. So if culturally we think that violent video games are the cause of mass shootings, then culturally we're going to want to watch them less, introduce them less to our kids, advertise with them less, and thus create our, our own self-censoring society. So hopefully this video will throw a little bit of factual information out there. I'd like to know what you guys think about the whole violent video game situation. I have a feeling I'm speaking to a predominantly pro video game audience out there. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.